Hello Internet. Today let's talk about how do you build an infinite loading page. Nowadays many websites have to use on a regular basis, whether it is something like twitter.com wherein you have a bunch of tweets loaded at a particular time when you reach the bottom of the page or 9gag.com wherein you have a lot of media which is loaded and therefore they load only like few posts at a time and as you reach the bottom of the page they load more posts. This is both efficient because let's say there's 50 posts which can be loaded but there's only a small part of the low posts that can be seen on the user screen. Therefore it is not effective to load all of the things 50 posts at one shot because the loading time will increase and moreover he cannot see all of it at one shot so it's better to load at least 10 of them and then it, his page will load faster plus it's more efficient only when as and when you need something you load that time. So that's what we can do with infinite loading, infinite scrolling. Now there's this new thing which has come which is called an intersection observer and it's experimental in nature. So as you can see it's not completely rolled out in all browsers and it's a little complicated to understand so I have tried learning it a little bit myself and I'll try to explain it in simple words for all of you all. So as you can see here that it is not supported on all browsers. Internet Explorer, Explorer doesn't support it. Neither do the some Android versions, some Android browsers. So let us just see my code and understand how do you use infinite scrolling. I have a very simple component. It has a div which has a paragraph, that's a title, and an image. And based on the number of uh, this, this response data is actually a group of an array of objects which has a bunch of data and I'm loading these images as and when I loop through it. So at each point of time I'm loading this 10 images. So as you can see when I load my component I have I'm uh, cutting my response into 10 and as and when I scroll bot to the bottom I will add 10 more to it I will make it 0 to 20 0 to 30 and so on so when I load my component I have something called as an observer which is I create a new instance of an intersection observer so this is basically I'm telling the browser to observe a particular DOM element so as you know that in our browser we have something different elements HTML tags and all are called DOM elements right so I have to observe a particular DOM element so first I create something to something that observes things and then I tell what to observe so here as you can see in this observe function I tell it that I wanted to observe my load ref that is my paragraph tag at the bottom so these are my once I render 10, let's say I render uh, 10 responses, 10 cards, right? At the bottom of my cards, I have a paragraph which I'm going to observe. So when it comes to the bottom, once it starts being visible on my screen, that's when it would automatically load the next set of uh, objects onto the screen. So let's say initially it was 10, later it becomes 20 and so on. So let me just show you this particular div on the screen just a second. So if I go to the bottom most part of the screen because it's as you see in my code I have written this below all of my below my map function after all the things get rendered. So let's see. So as you can see here, my paragraph is actually in the bottom. So as and when my page comes to the bottom of it and it starts to see on the, be seen on the screen, that's when I this function is triggered. So I say here that if my object, that is this particular div, if it is seen on the screen, so 0 is actually it's not seen and between 0 and 1 is like is it seen 10%, 20%, so you move between 0 to 1. So 0 0.1 is 10% seen, 0 0.2 is 20% screen and so on till 1%. So I want that 
even when it's just anything above zero, like 0 0.01, one person also if it's seen on the scene, then it uh, this whatever is get, going to get fired. And here what I'm doing is I am just uh, adding, changing my response data and increasing the index. Like let's say it was it was 10 in the starting, then I would increase it to 20, 30, so on. So as you can see, I'll just reload my page. As and when I reach the bottom of the page, it keeps adding 10, 10 more items to the uh, object of arrays. So therefore it is efficient and pretty good because as and when I'm reaching the bottom of the page, that's the only time I'm loading more uh, object of arrays into my response and as and when it will keep loading these different images as required. So this thing which this is another function which is really simple let's say at sometimes you want to disconnect prevent the infinite scrolling or let's say you are unmounting a component so you may want to disconnect the observer at that point of time here I have just set it as an to happen when I click this particular button just so that I can show you the bottom of the page and all that stuff so let me just run through this once again So here I have a, a div which renders, which is like a map through based on the response I get. Initially I am loading 10 uh, objects, array of objects and once I reach the bottom of the page that's when it would fire this particular, it checks this condition that if the thing is more than 0% on the screen then I would load this particular this particular set state is called. Actually, you would be calling an Axios or your API calls here to load 10 items, and in your component will receive props or something like that. You will be setting the state and increasing the items that you're displaying on your screen. And as and when I reach the bottom, I will keep loading 10, 10 items or how many other items you choose to load at a time. And therefore, uh, this is how it all works together. So this ref is actually a way of um, targeting your JSX or your React JSX in the DOM. So I created this by using React React uh, React's uh, create ref and assigning it to this dot load ref, which is going to be my loading what I'm going to use as a loading indication, right? So this I have, once I create a reference to this, I will use this to and pass it to my observer, which will observe it. So just think of your observer like this particular cat here. This cat is going to observe all of the elements that you wanted to observe. And once it, any of these elements cross a certain intersection ratio on your screen, that's when it would call this particular your function. Now the interesting thing to note here is that you can have multiple observers. So you can have, let's say, here I have one load thing here, right? You can have, there can be a situation where you want multiple different things to trigger the same thing. So that's how you can set multiple observers. And probably you can do some research on your own and see how to do that part. Here's another tutorial wherein they were using this observers to handle this intersection animations on your screen. So as you can see in the bottom of the page, as and when I come to the screen, that's the only time it is firing the animation. So even if I scroll back up and I come down, it would load the animations that that time itself. I think uh, this feature is actually pretty good and I people a lot of people have claimed it to be more efficient than the default ways but still it is experimental in nature and we need to see if they are going to support it eventually in the future. So as you can see this feature is experimental so use in caution if you are using in production. So I hope this video was useful for you in understanding how do you use an infinite scrolling uh, the intersect using a intersection observer. So I hope it is useful and see you in the next tutorial.